Hello, Michael here with another RenderMan tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about PTEX um, and what it is and how to use it in Maya with RenderMan um, and with 3D Code, as a matter of fact. So essentially what PTEX is, um, or per vertex painting, um, is it allows you to generate texture maps for your models without having to UV map them. It does this essentially by using each individual UV face, uh, that's a quad, this only works with quads, so if you've got a triangulated mesh you'll have to convert it to quads. Um, so it takes every quad and it applies whatever you've painted on it as its own individual UV map essentially. Um, the advantage of this is that you can scale each individual face to be whatever resolution you want. So you can get a lot more detail of out of specific areas of your model um, and ignore others. So say for instance you had a head, you could have a lot more resolution on the face and ignore the back side of his head, say for because you had hair on it or something like that. Um, and there are many other use cases. So I'm going to show you the workflow for 3D Coat. So I've already got a model prepared. So with 3D Coat open, we're going to click Paint with PTEX. I'm going to go Open, and I'm going to select this sphere that I created in ZBrush. Um, now you'll get this uh, dialog box here. So a couple of things worth noting. Uh, when you create the texture file size, um, this is going to determine the millions of polygons and the display mesh resolution. So in this example, we're going to use a texture size of 2K or 2048 by the same. You need to make your millions of polys higher than what your uh, sum would be of your texture resolution. So uh, 2000 by 2000 is 4 million, so we need to make our poly count higher than that. So let's just make it 5 for example. I could make it 4 and it would probably work fine, but I just like to give myself a little bit of headroom. Uh, display mesh, re mesh, mesh resolution is essentially how it's going to look subdivided. So uh, we're going to use uh, 12800. So we're using, uh, when we go back into Maya, we're going to be using a third level Catmull Clark subdivision scheme, which will make, which will sub subdivide the, um, the amount of polygons three times. So uh, 12,800 is what we're going to use. Smooth object is just so it's um, displayed as a smoothed mesh like as if you'd applied a subdivision scheme to it. And um, you can pretty much leave everything else off, um, or at least I will be in this example. So we'll click OK. And you'll see that I've got my smooth mesh. And I'll show you the, um, the quads for it. So uh, this is actually displaying higher than what I've actually got. Uh, this is showing the, the subdivision. That's the, that's the low poly and that's the high poly. So we're going to paint on the high poly because obviously we want to be able to get in all the, into all the detailed areas on our high um, poly mesh and export that and apply it to a high poly mesh but use a low poly base. So uh, let's quickly right click on our layer and I'm just going to fill this with a color. Um, and I'm going to use a uh, smart material um, and I'm using this one which is why I put that gray color in um, because as you can see it's got some transparent areas so if you're doing that uh, keep in mind to do that otherwise your PTEX map will be a bit jacked up uh, so I'm just gonna fill that in here I'm gonna create a new layer actually and then fill it okay so that's basically what it's gonna look like um, now uh, I've made sure that I've got um, uh, depth on. Um, I don't think this smart map has any depth but um, it does have gloss and I will show you how to export that as well. So we'll fill that whole layer. We'll close that and that's what it's going to look like. So now we need to get this out of 3D Coat and into uh, Maya and apply it to our low poly mesh. So we're going to go, uh, normally you do file export and export objects and textures that won't work in this example. Uh, what we're going to want to do is go to textures, export, and because we're using render man, we need to flip PTEX quads. This is really important, so make sure you have that selected. And then we're going to go color to PTEX. Um, and you can see I've practiced this, so I'll just delete these. And we'll call this one sphere underscore diff. So this is the diffuse channel. Save that. And then we'll do the same thing again. We'll go to textures, export, and we're going to export the glossiness. Um, I'm going to use this to control the roughness of our specular channel. Um, so we'll call it roughness, uh, sphere underscore roughness. Now this is a bit different than you'd normally how you'd normally do it with uh, your standard export. Um, if you want to see that workflow, I think I've already got a video tutorial for it, so check that one out. Um, but for PTEX, it's slightly different. 
because of the way it generates maps, the specularity doesn't seem to work the same, uh, but this workaround that I'm using works fine. So let's jump into Maya and open it up. All right, so I've got Maya open and you'll see that this is the object that I use to paint on uh, in 3D code. We're gonna import the same one. Um, and this is my low poly model, which is only 800 um, faces from memory. And you can see I've got my maps there, which are PTEX files. So first thing we wanna do, select your model and apply a Pixar surface shader to it, uh, which I can light in. Then we're gonna select our model. We'll go to attributes, render man, subdivision scheme, because uh, this is gonna have subdivisions applied at render time. And then we'll do the same again, attributes, render man, and ptext support. So once those are in, in your attribute editor, you'll see down the bottom here, you'll get these two or four new attributes. Next, we need to connect up our texture map. So we'll go into the hype shade editor. We'll run out our sphere. I'll just quickly rename that. And we want to connect our diffuse color first. So I'm just going to uh, hit tab and type in PXR, PTEX, and get a pixel texture node. Hit three on my keyboard to expand that and run the result RGB into the, fuse, the diffuse color channel. Then we're going to go to the file name for the um, for the PTEX node and find your PTEX diffuse that you created, which is this one here, sphere diff. Um, and I'll just take a quick render now to show you what that looks like. All right, so you'll see that it's subdivided um, and it has got the texture applied to it. Uh, it actually looks like it needs to be linearized. Uh, I don't know exactly what the bit depth of these um, texture outputs are. I'm assuming they're only 8-bit by the look of it. So that's linearized now and that color appears to be a lot closer to that color there. All right, so that's fine. So now we need to get our um, roughness channel in. So we do the same thing again, tab, Pixar text, P text, create that node, and we're gonna open up our um, roughness. And this is gonna work as our specular roughness. So um, specular roughness only works in alpha essentially. So if I tried to plug the RGB into it, it wouldn't work. So we're gonna use the um, result RGBR and plug that into the roughness. And I'll show you what it renders up like. Actually, I'll give it some specularity and then I'll show you what it renders up like. All right, so you can see that there's some specularity happening now, um, but it doesn't appear to be in the correct place. Um, it looks like the the white areas, which should be rough um, on the edges there, um, are actually receiving specularity and the blue areas are um, rough. So we're gonna have to invert that map, which is very easy to do. We'll just hit tab and type in Pixar invert, get an invert node. Now, once again, because this is a single channel output, we're just gonna run the RGBR into the RGBR in there. And then again, the RGBR out into the specular roughness. If we run that IPR again, you'll see now that the white areas aren't receiving specularity, uh, but the blue areas are. And then it is just a matter of going into your sphere um, and reducing the amount of specularity to the, to the point that you're happy. Um, also, because we used 3D Coat, 3D Coat uses a GGX specular model, so it's worth changing it to that. And uh, I'll just reduce the specularity quite a lot. And that sort of basically looks correct. All right, and that's it. Uh, rendered up a little bit higher and, and zoomed in so you can see uh, that's working there. Um, and you can do displacement maps with this uh, with the same method uh, also um, I don't use 3d coat to create displacement maps so um, I haven't looked at the ZBrush workflow for PTEX I'm not sure actually if ZBrush supports PTEX or not I'll have to check that out and maybe do another tutorial for ZBrush PTEX we'll see if you want that just let me know in the comments and I'll have a look Otherwise, um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. I hope that helped. If it did, make sure you click the like button. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed as I do a couple of tutorials every week on all sorts of CG products like 3D Code and Render Man and Maya and basically anything that gets requested if I've got time. Uh, also, you can stay up to date on Facebook. Link in the description. That's it for now, though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.